Uh, so this is concerning the evolutionary one. And I just... Um, By the way, whose glasses are these? Self-driving glass. Testing, testing. <laughs> so, um, I just wanted to uh, remark on this because I used to hold a very similar view myself, and I think that this is not quite right because uh, you mentioned that the evolutionary ideal would be if we were all cooperating together to achieve evolutionary goals. But in fact, the spider evolves to catch the fly, and the fly eva evolves to evade the spider. And you know, this is all over in nature that um, the sort of evolutionary solution to a problem may not be a cooperative one. You could uh, argue this based on perhaps um, evolutionary stable equilibria and game theory and show that you know, not all of these equilibria are cooperative. In fact, very many of them will not be. Um, so perhaps you're indicating some kind of view in which we can actually do better by cooperating. But I don't think this idea of morality would follow simply from evolution, if that's the case. Yeah, I hear what you're saying, and um, I uh, realize, of course, that they're not, they're not fully evolved at this point in time. Um, and especially the fly and the, the spider, I, I wouldn't consider that the apex of uh, you know, evolutionary enlightenment from that perspective. Uh, but then um, there's a really good book also by, um, I forgot the name now, but it's called uh, Cooperation as a, factor, as a Factor in Evolution, which is looking at, you know, uh, counterexamples of that as well. <coughs> well, I mean, um, well, okay. I, I just don't see that it's clear that some sense of fully evolved solves this notion either. Well, it uh, seems to me it'd be very easy to get a quote of religious quotes that say, kill off your enemy, chop off their head, whatever. The Islamic <laughs> State is religious. There's, uh, Christians have done all kinds of terrible things and exterminated the Cherokee. And uh, Hitler, I'm sure, had philosophers that could prove why his philosophy was the right thing. And the best thing was to kill all the Jews and the Gypsies and so on. You know, I, I don't think, uh, I think whatever you want to do, you can find a philosophy to justify it. <laughs> I think you can, you can rationalize a lot of things. It doesn't mean that it's uh, uh, you know, the, the correct interpretation. But it may mean that'll win, whether it was right or not. Uh, if it was wrong, they could have won. To, to uh, build on what Abel was saying, um, so what you're describing makes some amount of sense for uh, a large number of agents that are roughly the same uh, you know, in terms of power and you know, sort of similar in, in you know, society and the way they function. But if you have one entity powerful and a lot of much lesser entities, then, then those sorts of evolutionary dynamics would lead to a different conclusion. That they wouldn't say, you know, treat the other just nicely. They would say, you know, essentially, you know, make, make sure they don't get in your way. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, the, the thing is, when we have this entity, it would not have you know, emerged out of thin air. It would have been created uh, probably by human beings and that they would have instilled some kind of a utility function into that. And then, you know, the AI would uh, argue from that or would reason from that that, uh, you know, uh, these, these implications of evolutionary dynamics would, would apply from that perspective. I think I may agree with that, but I think that's a very different argument than saying that it's from reason alone that it would be ethical. In, in that argument, it's in the paper. So uh, the, the very condensed uh, 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 version of that which I presented here. It's essentially saying we'll get lucky and then stuff will work. Uh, no, it's not saying that at all. It's saying <laughs> there are certain uh, evolutionary dynamics and imperatives that have led us to where we are today. And uh, an AI would realize that by interpreting its security function and the intention of its author along those lines. Well, um, um, what I completely don't um, agree with you is that um, you're looking at historical data, historical observation in evolution. Projecting into the future, 
Um, it's kind of like um, you have rogue data and you say the model objection is the only one that can come up. Uh, whereas in the evolution, you basically you have, um, you have rules to guide, guide the development, but these rules don't apply to a completely new, um, um, new, new substrate of um, life that, that we're developing at the moment. Why not? I'd like to correct something that was said uh, twice by two different talks here. Um, uh, two people said that um, both uh, Elon Musk and uh, Stephen Hawking um, say that uh, things are, we can essentially do nothing about you know, things going awry. But that's not true. We're both supporters of essentially safety and beneficence research in AGI and AI, which work to actually introduce techniques and, and libraries and, and theories and whatnot to actually have changes and additions to uh, the various types of machine learning, AI, and AGI algorithms to make these things just safer and more beneficial for everyone. That's absolutely true. Uh, Elon Musk has given $10 million to, I think it's the Future of Life Institute, yeah. who's given out grants for research on this area, and in addition, um, trying to do some policy. I think they're doing the policy wrong, they're trying to do top down, and I'm trying to do emergent, so uh, we have yeah, some disagreements on the how, um, but. None of these folks are currently endorsing any particular solution to the problems that they see, but they are they are funding and encouraging research aimed at trying to find trying to find a solution. I mean, I think though I don't agree with those guys and everything, they are smart enough and wise enough to realize that none of us can know for sure what's going to happen, and it's worth doing research to try to figure out what what the possibilities are. Actually, I have, I have a couple of questions for, for everyone. So we, back in, in, I guess, AGI 2009, or 2009, my dad and I and, and Seth Baum did, did a, a formal survey about the future of AGI now. We, we, haven't, we haven't done that this year, but I'm curious, just for an in, informal survey, for my, my own curiosity. I mean, how, how, how many people in the room think we will have a human level AGI by, Say Kurzweil's date of 2045. Put, put, put your hand up if, if you think that will happen. So that's uh, somewhere around 40, 50%, I think, around half. How, how, how many think by uh, 2500 AD? No, just by 2,500. Well, we have it by 2,500. Yeah. Almost. Almost everywhere. Definitely. No, no. Okay. Oh, your arm's just tired. Okay. Now, this is a slightly more complex question, but it, it, it aims at the, the concerns that Hawking, Musk, and, and Bostrom and many others have, have expressed. So, if if we do achieve what I'll call massively superhuman AGI, without defining exactly what that means, but say something as much smarter than people as people are than, say, mice, right? So if we achieve massively superhuman AGI, how many think that human beings in their current form will still be around 100 years after that? 
roughly, roughly their current form. The human bodies, IQs are about the same as baby bodies. Okay, it's a fairly, fairly small minority. Yeah, I should be around. Well, perhaps. So what will be will be safe and sound in the people's zoo? Yeah. That still, that still counts as being around. Right? We may be in the people's zoo now, but this is not enough. Right? <laughs> if the zookeepers are, are sufficient. We may be already in a zoo, we don't know this. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, I can't foresee any scenario in which human beings and uh, robots and AGI and are, are not totally linked. I, I mean, you, how, how, how you just know, showed uh, us. Uh, he just showed us. We've already got DB direct brain interfaces. How are we not in 5, 10, 15 years going to be totally linked with our technology? And to s how are we not going to be part of our technology? Video is super human. That's all. Nothing else. Would you allow that it's not us who will be super human? Uh, first of all, it will start uh, with that movement against AGI, because at p about 30% of the people will lose their job because of present developments in AI. Physicists and mathematicians are already losing their jobs at hedge funds. The computer is doing better. Mm -hmm. And the same is happening in many other dimensions. It, uh, not only, also in robotic companies. It's happening. The, the question is, if next year you're 10% AI and 90% human, 10 years later you're 50% AI, 50% human, 10 years later you're 10% human, 90% AI, 10 years later you're point oh, 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 one percent human, and that human part gets offloaded to remote memory because it's, it's so boring. <laughs> <laughs> In what sense are you still human? Or, or is that continuous transition good enough to let you feel that you grown up just like you grew up from a, a very small baby at some point to what you are now? It, it's a little bit more complex. It's, it's, it's very complex already, but a little bit more complex. Because about four years ago, there was a conference about the expected lifetime, life expectations in the near future, and that did, the opinions differed very much. Some people said that for 2050, the average expected lifetime for, for somebody who is born by that time will be 120 years. That was the most pessimistic prediction. <laughs> Or the most optimistic, I don't know. <laughs> the, most <laughs> the other end was that the first person who will live for 1,000 years it has been born already. Yeah, quite, 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 quite possible. This is like an Aubrey de Grey's notion of the methuselarity, right? When, when if you live long enough, that ensuing life extension technologies will keep your life going longer and longer. Yeah, yeah, there's no money next time. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of other things to sort. Anyone else have? Comments, questions, yeah? Oh, can I get I just want to mention in our in our book, Hugh de Garris has a whole article about the coming war between the terrorists and the cosmos and how there's cosmos and there's going to be a, a war uh, against the uh, AI and the people who are in favor of it. I think it's more likely to be a war of different people using AI, but uh, that, that's another, and there's a long discussion also in the book of people debating it and so on. So you might look at that. Um, thanks for this workshop. It's very inspirational and, uh, of course, very relevant to the four transhumanists, uh, which are most of us, I suppose. <laughs> so um, uh, I was thinking about the uh, future of economy when uh, AGI and other, other advanced technologies come into play. Uh, you, you uh, the presentation of. Uh, so I'm thinking like two scenarios. One is very optimistic and one is very pessimistic. And in the optimistic one, you have uh, AGI uh, machines uh, predicting the economic value of uh, products and services much better and um, using better cognitive technology basically making the economy much more efficient and uh, everything is working out smoothly and uh, we have uh, better currencies, uh, um, we have uh, universal basic income, et cetera, and e everyone's happy. And uh, on the other hand, uh, the, the digital divide might increase and, um, and 
and maybe the uh, wealthiest will manipulate the market and they will make the uh, commodity prices go up so much, there will be so much inflation that uh, nobody will be able to use uh, their fancy 3D printers to manufacture anything of value or even buy uh, proper food. So uh, what, what do you think is the most likely outcome and, uh, and why? Your question was to me. Yeah. Um, I think something in between those two extremes will happen, <laughs> as, as usually happens. Um, I, I think that there will be emergent um, government. I think that's happening now. I think uh, local and regional governments are becoming stronger. And I think some of the experiment initial initiatives will work. I happen to be involved in a local <laughs> government experiment. Um, I think that uh, I think that some people will be able to use the AI as tools. And um, for instance, I was talking to a friend last night at, at the Bundestag, and she was complaining about a, a secretary that she can't get rid of. You know. And we're saying, well, when AI comes, you know, your secretary will actually do good work. <laughs> 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 because uh, she'll be able to accomplish 10 times as much. And, uh, you know, you actually will have increased her productivity dramatically. Um, so I, I think there, you know, the good scenarios will appear. What it is, if people can, there's, there's a huge lag time now. It used to be when a tech, new technology came out, um, people could start to use it and could get the productivity out of it before another new technology came out. The problem is the new technologies are coming out so fast that human beings haven't caught up with our aspirations. This is why my organization, Sapiens Forum, is trying to encourage people to really think big. Don't, don't be limited um, by your old imaginations we now are going to really be superhuman. Gosh, dream. <laughs> and then we can, take, we can take those technologies and make them productive. And we will have left to catch up with them. And, and then the old um, technological advances will actually improve benefit to society. And a new renaissance? Yeah, more than a renaissance. I think one of the things you find in futures and people like either the utopia, where everything's wonderful, or the dystopia, where everything's terrible, those are the books that sell. And a book that says things are just going to muddle along reasonably turn out more often to be correct, but they're not bestsellers. It doesn't appeal psychologically to, to that market. So that you get a lot of those, uh, those kind of books. And also things are, are going to happen in the next 10, 15 years. You talk about something that's not going to happen for a hundred years. There's people. People are not too interested. So that's 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 part of the literary nature of the utopia, dystopia, futurist field. Um, what I would like to add to that, that in an evolutionary time, like, like what we are having now, large fluctuations are occurring. It will not be smooth at all. But the, the, in the long run. AI is cartology uh, stuff. So uh, one of the proposed solutions for making AI more benevolent is uh, to m make them imitate human or learn the human values, to learn from human behavior, right? Uh, so it seems to me that your, your presentation is a good point because it's a, it's a kind of a cognitive dissonance to assume that the so-called super intelligent AI will be so much superior to us in terms of intellect, but yet it will fail to understand uh, basic ethics or meta metaethics. So, um, and, and the other thing is the philosophical thing. Well, the um, machine, the robot, is certainly not human. <laughs> but um, then we uh, force it to act like human, which is a kind of a logical contradiction. And lead to all sorts of uh, wrong inferences. Um, so, um, uh, do you think this, uh, this is uh, this 
the real contradiction or is there a method to address, address this? Uh, just, just one question. When you say that we, we were forced to behave like human, who, whom do you mean? We yeah, have well, uh, sure. <laughs> because <laughs> like, like, <laughs> human behavior is very diverse. So <laughs> if you're friends with the uh, bad guy, uh, some very bad behavior from. So I think the main interesting thing about and AGI and we in the Global Brain Group I think sort of is this sort of um, many to many. In, in humans we have to take all this information and turn it into one set of actions, you know, because we've got one body. Um, the global brain has many actuators and many means of acting, so it's, it doesn't have to just make one decision, you know, it's like many to many, and so it's, that's in itself is something, so is it going to be, you know, when you start to think of a planetary entity, obviously, if it thinks of itself as an entity, then it's going to be more like an amoeba, right? I don't know. Um, so it, all those kinds of questions, is it, is it many to one, many to many? What, what, is, what is this entity or entities? Yeah. I, I, I tend to disagree with that. When, when you make a decision, you don't make a decision. It also means lots of lots of involvement, uh, lots of lots of little uh, control actions, which are combined together towards some desired events. So I don't see too much difference here. Um, I think it is, I hope to answer that your question that you just had. Um, I think it is very problematic that, um, and that is my perception, maybe I'm wrong, that a lot of uh, perceptions on friendly AI are along the lines of, well, we're gonna have the utility function, and then the, 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 what the AI is gonna do is basically completely dissolved or uh, disassociated from the actual reality. So look at it, ah, okay, paper clips, right? Let's make <laughs> paper clips without um, it trying to interpret who actually uh, programmed that in, you know, what is the, what is the context of it all, and, and being, just being transhumanly intelligent would enable it to have all these insights about what it actually means in the human context to program such a goal in there and would question the validity of it. That to me is just obvious and it seems that that is not something that is being considered by um, a lot of the literature where it seems to be more along the lines of, well, whatever the utility function says, that's what it's going to do without further consideration. That doesn't seem realistic to me. Yeah. advanced AGIs as utility maximizers may, may run into limitations. I mean, we're, we're building systems now when they think of them as utility maximizers, and they act that way for a while. But we have to remember these AGI systems are going to be interacting with the universe, which we don't fully understand now, and maybe evolving in ways based on features of, of the universe around us that we don't even know. And they're going to be evolving in unforeseen directions and may become complex self-organizing systems of a type that's only very awkwardly modeled in terms of any kind of, of utility maximization. So it's hard, hard to say if these ways of thinking are actually going to be useful for predicting things at, at that scale, or is it, or is it like a a cockroach trying to predict whether Apple or Samsung will, will win the next best cell phone moment or something. But that's it. I mean, I, I think the the next next steps of evolution of AI, if we go from narrow AI to proto AGI to vaguely human level AGI, that that progression we can think about perhaps fruitfully and be able to understand understand some meaningful things. And you, when you get too far beyond, I'm a little skeptical that our whole language for talking about it is gonna seem is gonna seem useful to our massively trans legacy human selves that, that exist by, by, by that point. But 
just wondering, every time we say we, who are we talking about? Who of us is going to be affected in what way by AI? What, what about a 1%? Is it a 5%? What about the other 95%? When are they going to be affected and how? I think if you're talking about the humans in the world population, I mean, if we, if we take current advanced technologies, essentially every human in the world is being massively affected. Like, I mean, these mobile phones we all carry around, if, if you go into sub-Saharan Africa, even into rural areas of, of Ethiopia or Kenya, everyone's got a mobile phone. Right? Not, not everyone has a smartphone, but I mean, a farmer can, a farmer can call the city and see if someone's offering, offering them a fair price for the crops they're selling, right? So th it does seem that the lag time between a technology being available to the elite and that same technology being available to everyone else gets shorter and, and, and shorter, even though there's a lot of, of inequality in the world. So I, I, think, I, I, I think AGI, as it unfolds, probably will affect ev everybody's life on, on, on the planet in, in, in one probably in roughly the same ways, to the extent we're talking about something far, far, far beyond the level of, of any of us, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that, that, that's another good point that, that Bostrom makes in his book, which I, I, mean, I don't fully agree with everything in that book, but I mean, a point he makes, which I believe he borrowed directly from Eliezer Yudkowsky, is, I mean, we, we think about intelligence as being in the range from, like, the village idiot to Einstein, but actually you've got, like, a mouse down here, the village idiot here, Einstein here, and future AGIs up, up, up there, right? And if you, if you think about it that way, which is where I think we're going e eventually, then, I mean, similarly, the difference between rich and poor humans right now is very small compared to a future where you had, you know, molecular assemblers or femto assemblers or something. And the, you know, the difference between Bill Gates and a peasant in Ethiopia is, is going gonna, is gonna to seem very trivial. Well, that that won't necessarily that doesn't mean there wouldn't be That's strange. Bill Gates is still where he is now. Well, he, he won't be where he won't be where he is now. He'll, he'll be he'll be he'll be in here or something, right? <laughs> um. I did uh, agree with Ted in that I think this idea that oh gosh, you know, um, AGI is going to take over the future and we have no. Actionability ourselves. I think that we we have a means to affect at least near term, in decades and decades hence. And I think that it is up to us to encourage our political systems uh, to expand, uh, uh, to decrease disparity, and to expand technologies uh, to those. I just mentioned that in our book we have a chapter on uh, singularity in Africa by Hure, whose name I can't pronounce, and we have one on China. And so we do look at the, have people looking at the implications for third world countries and so on. I think we can get to talk about that, but he couldn't come. He couldn't get a visa to, to Germany or he would be here. But that's yeah, that, that was a bit ironic. So we had a, a co-author from my Ethiopian AI lab, ICOG, Aroik Sergei, and he, he wrote a chapter for this book on the the impact of the singularity on Africa and how he sees that, you know, advanced technology can help African nations perhaps leapfrog beyond some of the intermediate stages and, and advance very rapidly. And he was going to come here and give a presentation, but uh, the German embassy in Addis Ababa stalled his visa application so long he wasn't able to come. So it's a, 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 bit, a bit ironic given, given the theme. I think that they, there's a possibility that they, those countries can gain more because they have more to gain and they have less of the intermediate infrastructure. But it's not it's necessary that that'll happen. But there, there are ways that it can happen. Are we having a comment from over here? Yeah, the, um, I'm a business guy, so I, I learned to ask the question: uh, Where does the money come from? And follow the money. So, um, does this change anything of this discussion towards uh, utopia, dystopia? I mean, the, the, the resources flowing into the massive uh, enterprises at the moment are coming from specific com companies, even though they've got the uh, don't be evil um, lemma. So, but not all of the companies do follow this man lemma and, uh, and companies do act in a, in a competitive environment, if not even uh, stronger. So 
Does this change the discussion? I think the, the funding for ADR now is coming from a lot of places, right? I mean, the, the China Brain Project is large and is heavily funded by the, the Chinese government, which I don't know if they have Don't Be Evil as their motto or not. <laughs> Possibly, right? And I mean, I mean, we have, and I, I would still say the driver of AGI progress on average remains university research. So a lot of what big companies are doing is taking algorithms developed by university researchers and scaling them up massively. So I, I think it's the economic scene is quite is quite complicated, and I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure how that much matter, how much that matters in the long run. And maybe once you have an AGI that has a human level intelligence and then a beyond human level intelligence, then the, the dynamics sort of proceed of, of, of their own accord, regardless of the nature of the organization that first created it. I, I agree with the ideas coming more from ac academia, but then um, I think real, like a potential real AGI is about massive amounts of data on, in massive data centers and, you know, with this, you know, from research going to um, um, development, like, of, of new products, which is, I think, in history of business only and exclusively handled by companies. So how, how do you think the world, how do you think the world will be different if the first human level AI is invented inside Baidu, Google, or IBM versus if it emerges Say from a from an open source project, what 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 difference will that make? In, in exactly, that, that's my that's that's the question in my head, and um, with my with my background, um, I'm I'm actually not that afraid of. Um, well, the the, the work, there, there's one worst case scenario that that really intrigues me. That is the like General Electric uh, versus whatever big companies being able to well, similar to the financial market uh, argument, but allocating their their money. Um, in, in this financial portfolio more efficient than others. That is a purely economic argument now. And they, with increase, uh, even small AI already, they might improve this, this, this financial performance. Mm -hmm. And then from this perf improved performance, they may outperform their competitors, Siemens or whoever in the world, um, leading to a self-increasing tendency um, allowing them to build better AI. So that would be an, an, an exponential takeoff. So m m my own view on that is I, I think that a, a self-improving general AI that was generally getting smarter and smarter than any human being is too big a risk to shareholder value for any company's board to rationally undertake. I mean, what, what, what company would want a superhuman AI that has a risk of repurposing all matter into computronium or, or obsoleting the economy and just creating molecular assemblers to give free goods to everybody. It, it seems like what a company would want to do is create a narrow AI that will just make them more money than their, than their, their competitors. I mean, just th thinking rationally about the goals of a company as a profit-maximizing entity, I mean, that exists within our social and economic system, which, which would be obsoleted, I think, by massively superhuman AGI. So, I mean, the, the goals of companies and the goal of kind of transhumanism-oriented AGI research, they intersect quite complexly, I think. I, I disagree with that. We could right. be, okay. You don't have to wait for the AGI. It's all, yeah. It's uh, the this, this slow uptake uh, yeah. scenario. Let's, let's, let's take 50 years for, like, and the ideas are okay, and but then until the practical engineering yes. stuff starts right. working to be super intelligent. So let's assume fi 50 years and this one company um, evolutionarily um, um, right. being able to, to gain... So D Dunkin' Donuts makes a superhuman donut maker. Right. That would we be cool. Consider. That would be a <laughs> massive donut. Yeah, we can yes. consider a single example. This is why Microsoft bought Skype. Before Skype, the information from Skype was not available at all. But because it was totally distributed that they warranted, warranted that the information cannot be reached by others. But now the information goes to Microsoft first. We check that directly by establishing a new website, co making a call to the website through Skype, and then we got immediately a call from, from Microsoft to that website. 
So the collection of the information, the recommender systems, and the predictions by the recommendation, that's already a huge power, and I think that this is the only reason why Microsoft bought Spark, Spark mm -hmm. and that Google has a, sim a similar system. So it's already ongoing, and I think uh, we, it's a question of policy. It's a question of policy. It's a question of uh, we, one more thing which is important. We are not that much worried about privacy anymore. But we are. But the new generation is not. They are putting everything up to Facebook. That's and not true. A new generation is more concerned with privacy. Well, maybe in your country. <laughs> 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 but it depends. <laughs> that, 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 that could be a strong regional dependence. <laughs> and it could be a strong cultural dependence the also. New, the new generation is more aware of the consequences of being machine it, OK, that would be. The, Something this, for this a, for a, a study. A, a digressive debate. That, that would be that would be a study for 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 local government and to help people to overcome such problems. It's definitely not the, mm -hmm. the not the issue. And it's not the property in Hungary. In Hungary, they are putting everything up. So so yes, I think that the, the worries are there. Uh, AGI or AI is not used only for good purposes, whatever. So for future and peace and and well-being, so we have to worry about and then there's a huge role for, for, for the governments and for the local governments. Maybe you would like to come. All right, we have maybe a couple more questions, then we'll be done. Let's see what, what Weaver has to say. Uh, just a comment. Uh, I kind of the concerned about thinking about uh, AGIs as kind of purposeful uh, tools because uh, I don't think that not only they cannot be controlled, uh, there is something in, in the attitude of uh, relating to them only as tools, there is something which is hopefully wrong about it. And actually human history was done before uh, people were enslaving other people and other intelligent people and uh, making them as tools <coughs> for their own purposes. So if we think about the future of AGI, I don't think it's a good policy or a good philosophy to think about future AGIs as tools. Uh, we need to go at, at least a little bit beyond this, beyond this. Otherwise, we will produce certain AGIs that will uh, fight, that will fight or want to survive or things like yeah, this. Yeah, a familiar theme from science fiction books and movies. Yeah, this is, this is a projection of yeah. human psychology. It's not, uh, it's not something which is embedded anywhere in, in its first principle. It is just a projection of what, human, what, what humans do. So I think we have to think about uh, to go beyond the tool perspective. It makes, it makes sense that in the medium term, interacting with an AI in a, an emotionally positive way as an equal and living with them comfortably in society, giving them rights would help AGIs to want to treat people well. Th this is what my colleague David Hansen is after with his humanoid robots, figuring if AIs can express emotion and understand emotion, become integrated in, in society, then things are gonna, are gonna go, go better than if, than if they're somehow treated as, as slaves or as something you need to keep in a box somewhere. Now what, how much difference that makes later on once AGIs have, have modified their code dramatically is, is an interesting and, and open question. But it does seem to me there would be a, a period in which this would make a big difference at, at any rate. Um, we, we seem to keep jumping back and forth from this idea of the robot as an independent entity to the AGI as an independent entity. And I mean, I really don't understand how we're all not linked together at this point. And we may be on teams. Um, we may act collaboratively. And those teams will intersect and be dynamic and so forth. But well, the I, I robot is an entity. I, I my friend Hugo Gutierrez has a standard answer to that, which is that the amount of computing power in a grain of sand, if used effectively, is something like a trillion times greater than the effect of computing power used by a human brain. So if, if you really had very advanced utilization of mass energy for computation, 
if you had something that was by some measure a quadrillion times smarter than, than the person, what does it mean for you to be on the same team as a paramecium? Well, I guess I mean, I'm like, I'm like the guy in my delegate who gives me a yeah, nice yeah. chance when I like what I do. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> but, I mean, there's, I think in, certainly that, that's, that's very meaningful in, in the medium term, but it's, it's not obvious if, if that's the long term. And it's also not obvious what we can do about that long term. Anyhow, it's, it is what's to come. Do we have a, 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 a final words of wisdom? Uh, I'd like to a little bit, uh, let's say, extend uh, from, from what we were said about uh, let's say, uh, human values. So basically, how we think about AGIs is projections of our values. So, and that's why they are, kill, they are going to kill us. Uh, because if we had so the superhuman powers, probably that's what we are going to do. So, and I would like to connect this to the this morning where we were there were talks about how to make AGIs have human values. And I would like to question: Do we really want that? Yeah, well, hu hu human values are a mixed bag in, in a number of senses, right? So, I, I th and they're, they're, they're hard to pin down. On the other hand, I mean, even the worst human has values that are comprehensible to us in some way, whereas a non-human AGI could behave in ways that just don't mean anything to us. Ag again, as explored in, in science fiction amply, as in Lem's novel, novel Solaris, right? And I, 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 guess, I guess to take the view Jim was putting forth, if the AGI was closely allied to us as it became smarter and smarter, its values would evolve from current human values in the way that our values have evolved from the values of, of cavemen, and then human values would have, have some input into the values of these, of these future systems, which in some ways is a different situation than you know, the AGI that's just sitting there with a totally non-human value system. But that's a... That, that, these, are, these are very tricky questions, and th this, is a, th this is another question that uh, our friends at the Machine Intelligence Research Institute have thought about. I mean, one question is, if you have an AGI that's rewriting its source code and getting smarter and smarter, will it maintain its initial goals in any sense? And th another question is, you know, what initial goals would it even have? I mean, how do we supply an AGI with, with, with goal content? Like in, in OpenCog now, we think about goals like, you know, get positive feedback from the people the system is talking to, discover new things, you know, I I experience novelty, keep yourself alive. But formalizing these goals in a simple way may only get you so far. The AGI may pick up goals by interacting with people, kind of as a young child does, but in its own way. But it's not that determinate which goals our children are going to pick up from us via the interaction. And it's not that obvious exactly what goals an AGI would, would pick up from us via, via the, the interaction, right? So we don't really know what human values are at any great level of detail, and nor do we know what take on human values an, an AGI system would get, and no one is studying that with any, any great depth. And looking in the literature of, of moral philosophy, to me, is not very inspiring. But that we're getting close to an understanding of, of, of those topics. Yeah. All right, one, 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 one more comment. You're, you're going to solve everything, right? Uh, not yet. <laughs> uh, uh, on the rewriting itself and on uh, changing the goals, I think that if uh, we have an AGI system that um, is smart enough and reasonable, it will t quickly find that the universe is finite and the, <laughs> the ultimate goal is to minimize the processing power per uh, bit of information processed, so it will try to gain most of the processing on information gain, so we'll try to uh, go down to London's limit, uh, just decrease uh, temperature, <laughs> And, and, and eliminate all these processes which are not effective in that way, meaning, for instance, humans. And so, so that's, that's only ultimate goal I, I, I see, it's, it's, it's provided it, 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 the universe is finite.
That's one possibility. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. other, other possibilities abound as well, right? I mean, trying to accumulate as much resources as possible. That seems natural to those who grew up in a, in a, a regime of scarcity of resources, but it might not seem natural to an AGI. May, maybe it will act to optimize its own sense of aesthetics, and which is something that we can't even understand at this point. But I guess. One, one nice feature of these discussions on the future of AGI is that they can, they can go on forever and they, they will probably be continuing without conclusion until a superhuman AGI e e exists and explains everything to us. So I guess we, yeah, we, we'd better call this, uh, call this to an end now so we can all escape before the, the storm sweeps Berlin down to a, down to a pulp. So I'd, 